Kraka is the B&M dive coaster located at Haida Park in Germany. The ride opened in 2011 and was the first of what we're calling the mini dive coasters. The ride stands only 135 feet tall and there's a good chance that it inspired many of the other dive coasters that have since been built around Europe. At the time Kraka opened, the only other one that was located in Europe was, of course, Oblivion at Alton Towers, and since then several more have opened. But another reason why we really call these the mini dive coasters is because Kraka is a very short ride. If you look at the track length, just over 1,500 feet of track, a single inversion, and really there's not a whole lot to the ride. So let's walk through the experience of this thing. When you reach the station, you have three different options for rows, which is pretty standard for a dive coaster. We, of course, picked the front row because we wanted the view of looking down in the Kraken's mouth, and there's only six seats per row on this thing. Here in America, we're pretty used to some of these big, wide dive coaster trains. When you're on the outer edge, it feels very different than when you're closer to the center of the train. This one, it's a bit different. You'll still feel a difference if you're on the outer seat versus the inner seat, but it's nowhere near as drastic. So you get the all clear and you start up your lift hill. Again, 135 feet. When you crest the top, you reach a straightaway that eventually leads to a 90 degree turn towards your drop. And on that first section of straightaway, you actually get a really nice view of the Intamin wooden coaster Colossus. Colossus was closed when I visited, so I think the view just kind of made me more sad than anything. But when you hit that turn, your view actually changes towards all the white coasters that are conveniently placed next to each other. And then comes the big moment, the hang. The train grabs onto a small chain that holds you over the 87 degree drop. So not quite 90 degrees, but it certainly feels 90 degrees. You're hanging over there for a couple of seconds. And if you'd never ridden a dive coaster before or weren't a big coaster fan or anything, this moment is really gonna freak you out, especially with the theming element that they have placed at the bottom. And this is what makes the ride. And I think Hyda Park is aware of this. People ride Kraka so that they can stare straight down into a mouth. You see all the teeth there. You feel like you're getting eaten alive. And I think it's that theming element right there that determines whether someone's going to want to sit on the outside seat or an inner seat. On the outside seat, you're just a little closer to those teeth. So it feels like a bit more of a near miss. So I love staring straight down to the mouth. That's so cool. And just admiring that piece of theming in general. When you look at it from the other side, it looks like a wrecked ship. You can see these giant giant tentacles wrapped around it. It's really cool. So after you've hung over there for a couple seconds, you're dropping. And this feels like a pretty short drop. Not a whole lot of airtime. You reach your max speed of 64 miles per hour, which I think is a bit of a misleading stat because the amount of time you spend going that fast is actually probably pretty minimal. And the reason I say that is because at the bottom of the drop, this coaster does something different. You hit a set of water breaks. And I had completely forgotten about this before riding. And it's a very cool aspect of the ride, but the issue is water brakes do exactly what it sounds like. It acts as a form of a braking system. It's a neat sensation gliding along the water, but it also acts as a bit of a buzzkill. Maybe some people won't mind it, and I have no problem with them incorporating a splashdown element onto the ride. I mean, there's plenty of dive coasters that have that, but including it right after the drop? I mean, I get they had a limited amount of space to work with. I imagine that the park wanted to incorporate it since this coaster is located right alongside this giant lake that they have in the center of the park. And so it was making good use of an already existing body of water. So yeah, sure, why not incorporate it? But right after the drop, it's just kind of an odd sensation plunging through that mouth, which is such a great moment, and then hitting straight track. You feel yourself slow down a bit, and then that's when you hit the first inversion. So I think my opinion of the splashdown goes as follows. I totally understand why the park wanted to include it, and I think it is a great visual spectacle. I love watching the water shoot up, but was it the right choice to put it right after the drop? Mm, I don't know. It sounds like it was probably either incorporate a splashdown there after the drop or not at all. And so they made the choice. Yeah, let's go for it. It'll look cool. So why not? So you hit the water breaks, you curl up into your only inversion. Pretty standard Immelman, not really a whole lot to say about it. You pop up into a little airtime hill where you'll get a little airtime and then you turn right into the break run. And that's it. Yes, this is an insanely short ride. So did it feel underwhelming at all? Oh, absolutely. I hit the brake run, I was like, that was it? I mean, I knew going in that it was gonna be a shorter ride, but still, I was like, dang. 
that's not a whole lot. I mean, you ride this thing for the drop, and I imagine that drop scares the crap out of a lot of the public, but as someone who was never a huge fan of dive coasters and kind of found them to be gimmicks, this one didn't feel any different. When I was walking down the exit, I didn't really feel the desire to get back on this thing. I didn't feel the exhilaration of having just gotten off a roller coaster. Instead, I was feeling mixed emotions like, wow, the signature ride here that was open, because again, Colossus was closed. The signature ride here is kind of dumb. But I think I also had to take a step back and realize that I am not really the target audience for this ride. The average park goer has not ridden much larger dive coasters than Kraka. So in that regard, I imagine that the average person who rides this probably likes it more than I do. That being said, I definitely got the vibe that there were other people getting off this thing saying, yeah, it was just kind of short, you know? So speaking frankly, this ride didn't do a whole lot for me. I didn't really enjoy it. It was a one and done. There were multiple other rides here that I wanted to re-ride, but this was not really one of them. I absolutely believe that this ride is more fun to watch than it is to ride. In my opinion, the two best things about this coaster, one is the theming element at the bottom of the drop, very awesome, and then also the score. I'm a score did a soundtrack for Kraka, and it's really good. You can hear it playing all around the coaster. It feels very Pirates of the Caribbean-esque, like dangerous, like you know something's coming. Definitely go give it a listen if you haven't heard it before. But as for the actual coaster, for its final score, I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. I just didn't care. And I know I probably sound like a pessimist saying that, but if I had to put together a list of my favorite dive coasters, this would absolutely be towards the bottom. But I wanna hear from you guys. If you agree with my thoughts on Kraka at Haida Park, if you think I'm wrong, please let me know why. And of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more coaster reviews from theme parks around the globe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.